Hi, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out the solo from Hey Joe by Jimi Hendrix. Surely one of the greatest guitar solos of all time. A really good fun one to play this one. You can kind of take it pretty easy uh, to really nail it down just like the record will take you a bit of practice. Contains a lot of the real Hendrix kind of tricks so learning this solo is a good kind of insight into the way he plays and some of his kind of classic moves. So what we're going to do, I'm going to go to a close-up. I'm going to play it once through at kind of normal speed, then once through a bit slower for the guys that don't need the, like the full explanation we just want to see where I'm putting my fingers and then I'm going to take you through it lick by lick and explain to you all of the techniques that you need and any of the problems that you might come across trying to play this solo. It's a real cracker, you're going to love it. Okay, now a nice slow one. So let's go through it now, one lick at a time. Uh, it's pretty much all based out of this E minor pentatonic scale. Okay, box one, up in the 12th fret. I'm hoping most of you are kind of familiar with that. So uh, the first note is with the third finger, 15th fret, second string for a tone bend. Then we're gonna play down the scale. So 12th fret on the thinner string, 15th fret to 12th fret on the second string. Then onto the third string, and we're going to play the 14th fret with the third finger, do a tone bend and release. Flick it off to the 12th fret, and then we're going to play 14th fret on the 4th string, and finish on the 12th fret on the 3rd string, with some vibrato. So that licks slow. One more time, the bend. Down the scale, bend, release, flick off, and on the last note, you want to make sure you get a nice anchored vibrato there using the kind of pivot point on the end of your first finger. That's how Hendrix gets his really nice wide vibrato. Wouldn't worry too much about how you're picking it, it looks like I'm doing down. Up, down, up, down, up, down. But it doesn't really matter. Okay, the second lick. Okay, we're starting with the same bend, 15th fret on the second string, tone bend. Now it's almost the same. We're going to play this. But we're actually going to start with a little bar with the first finger covering the thinnest two strings. We play the thinnest string, then we put the third finger down in the 15th fret of the second string, but we make sure it's round enough so we can still get that note as well. It's one of those classic little Hendrix moves. Sounds so much different to... Use all down picks for that little bit, I think, but... Uh... Now we've got this... So 14th fret tone bend, first finger on the 12th fret second string, back to the 14th fret but without the bend, 12, 14, 12, with a little curl on it, not a full bend, just a quarter tone bend, and finishing on the root note, which is the 14th fret of the 4th string. Okay, into the third phrase. 
Okay, so we've just got 12th fret on the G string, on the 3rd string, 14th fret on the 4th string, and back to the 12th fret with a slide down. Then slide up to the 14th fret on the 5th string with the 3rd finger, 12th fret on the 4th string, 14th fret. The 12th fret we're going to play the B string and the G string, and finish again on the root note, the 14th. Okay. Then we've got the 15th fret bend, and the first one's a lot shorter than the second one. So it's just bend. Once it reaches the note, mute it with the outside part of your picking hand there. The second time, you're going to play it and hold the bend, a little bit of vibrato. Now we've got the all-time classic, it's probably my favourite Jimi Hendrix lick. <laughs> it sounds so cool. And it's all about having these notes ringing together. So we start with the first finger barring the thinnest two strings. Then third fingers going down on the 15th fret on the second string. But making sure, of course, that we can still get that 12th fret on the thinnest string ringing out as well. Now we're going to go for the 14th fret tone bend. Now, it's unusual for me to bend with the second finger, especially on its own there. Normally, I recommend bending with at least two fingers to get a good solid bend, but definitely a lot of Clapton and Hendrix stuff is doing a bend with the second finger on that note. There's a lot of that sort of stuff goes on in that style. And I think particularly for this lick and a lot of Jimi Hendrix stuff, maybe the bend doesn't quite make it. So. If the bend makes it exactly, sounds like that. If it doesn't quite make it, you get this kind of dissonance. And I think that's actually cool in this lick. You don't want it to be all kind of nice. You want it to be a little bit off, a little bit flat, you know, to my ears. That's what makes it sound cool. Then back to the 12th fret thinnest two strings. 15th fret on its own. Another 14th fret bend, and back to the 12th. Okay, now there's a really awkward little jump here. It goes from this note all the way down to the 12th fret on the 4th string. We're going to play 12th fret, 14th fret on the 4th string, then lay that 3rd finger down to play 14th fret on the 3rd string, and down to the 12th fret. Just takes a bit of practice to get that jump over, especially if you got used to the bar. It's not that far for it to get to. It just feels a little bit awkward, so don't be surprised if it does for you. It, it kind of felt awkward for me learning it as well, but I love the lick. So cool. Okay, now the next line. Okay, the first part. Real kind of normal blues run this uh, 14th fret tone bend. First finger barring the thinnest two strings. Playing the B string and then the E string. Third finger 15th fret of the thinnest string tone bend. And release. Just all time classic blues lead. Now the next little part, oh, that, I should mention that happens a bit late as well. It feels like it should happen on the beat, but it happens just after the beat. So make sure you feel where the, you know, where the beat is, where beat one is, and start the lick a little after it. Again, listening to the record is what you want to be doing for that. So that lick, bend on the 14, 12th fret, 12th fret, 15th tone bend, and then release it. One thing that I like to do is use my thumb there to cover all of the rest of the strings. So when it bend, when the string comes down, it doesn't hook those other strings. Otherwise, it's quite likely you get this kind of where those other strings there kind of tend to ring out a bit. So I use my thumb often on those strings to help keep them a bit tidy. Anyway, now we've got really, really nice rhythm on that. You could use this is the twelfth fret of the thinner string. Then 14th fret tone bend. You can either use your second finger or your third finger. I kind of seem to change between which one I feel most comfortable with. But anyway, if you're going to use your third finger, the fourth finger will go down 15th fret of the second string, first finger in the 12th, 
back to the 15th fret and the second string, then the bend again, and finishing on the 12th. Now this last little bit is a real classic Hendrix move. This full tone bend, muting the string, and then playing the 12th fret, you know. Real, you know, you gotta get that one down if you're learning some Hendrix. So uh, that whole line, Okay, so the last little phrase is a 14th fret on the D string with a slide down, an open E, then we're sliding the third finger up to the 16th fret on the 5th string, then the 14th fret with the 1st finger on the 4th string, 16th fret with the 3rd finger, 4th string, and then back to the 12th position we're going to play the B string and the G string, the 2nd and 3rd string, and I think he was just going for that note but he's definitely you can hear Jimmy hitting those two strings, the fifth string and the fourth string, at the 14th fret, and then there's a little slide up. Now just as a little note, this 14 and the slide happens on beat three. It feels to me always like it wants to come earlier, but after the one, two, three, and four, and. So that slide's happening on beat three. So one, two, three, and four, and one, two. I know you're going to have a whole lot of fun playing this solo. I remember learning it kind of badly as a kid and, and not really getting it right, but it was still so much fun. The thing that I would really, really recommend that you do is listen to the original recording a whole lot, and if you can get your hands on some kind of slow down software, that's the best way to learn this, especially for the rhythms and the phrasing. You know, to, you can try and count it out, but it's not exactly the, the rhythms are not mathematically spot on. They're, they're a little bit loose and that's kind of what makes it nice and the best way to cop that is to be playing along with the original recording. Really there's no substitute and if you can't play along straight away at full speed what you want to be doing is setting it to maybe 50, 60, 70 percent depending on where you're at. So learn it first, get what the notes are, get your fingers around the shape so you know what's coming up, tab it out in front of you if you don't have a tab in front of you so you can see it, you can feel it, you know what it's going to sound like and then put it at 50 percent and play along at 50 percent. It's really interesting. You'll hear a lot of stuff to do with the way the bends are played and how the slides are and all of those little kind of nuances that you'll hear at 50 percent you won't hear at full speed. So that's a good thing to do and then gradually just start moving the tempo up and up as you go along and that way you're playing with the original recording all the time. You can use a metronome for that kind of stuff but metronomes are really dry and a bit boring you know. So if you're playing along with the original track you you cop some of that time feel which is a really good thing to be learning as well as the actual song and of course don't forget to break it down into licks as well and 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 steal the individual phrases to that you can use in your own improvising because that's where the blues happens you know that's everyone's nicking each other's phrases and that's kind of what created the blues language and it's uh it's an important part of it so uh have fun with it and i'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon you take care of yourselves bye bye <laughs>